Hi guys, this is Shannon with AVA Direct, and today we're taking a look at Intel Optane, which is one of the newest storage technologies, and roughly considered one of the fastest. And we're gonna to discuss today why that is said. Now, taking a look at the history of how Optane came to be. Everything started with standard NAND flash-based SSDs like this Intel 750. This is what's called an AIC, or add-in card. This used standard NAND flash. Then we moved into the very first Optane product. This is a Optane memory module. This is used for caching and uses 3D cross-point memory. Then we have the Intel 900P. This is an enthusiast class 3D cross-point storage. And then the 905P, the newest one we're gonna be discussing today. Now with Intel Optane, it is, the reason we say it is considered one of the fastest is being that when you use your system every day, Everyone loves to tout the high sequential speeds, like for instance, a Samsung drive doing 3,500 plus megabytes a second read speed, but that's sequential, that's QDEP32, that's gonna be, theoretically, if you wanted to reach that speed, you're either A, benchmarking, or you're moving huge files from one to the same like drive or from a RAM cache, something like that to achieve those speeds. And I don't believe most users are ever gonna really have that usage application where you will see a sequential speed that high. Optane with 3D cross point memory, this kills it in low Q depth. So your 4K reads, things like that. This is where we can see, compared to let's say one of the most popular drives, Samsung 960 Pro. We personally tested it and we saw from a three and a half to a four and a half times improvement on your 4K, your low Q depth speeds. And this is the small transactions you do every day when you're in Windows. So all the little tiny file transfers going back and forth really fast, Optane does really well at that. So I was originally a doubter because Optane has a very uh, cloudy past. It started, as I said, with a memory module, SSD caching, so to speak. If you remember the old RST Intel technology, the, rap uh, the rapid storage technology, things like that, where you would be able to attach previously an SSD, started way back in like the Z68 days, P67 days, you could do that kind of stuff. And it was somewhat okay adopted, didn't perform really like what people expected. So when this was released, it was saw as a reinvention of the same thing. People never really gave it a shot to succeed. So then, when Intel launched the Optane SSDs, it was lumped in the same category and people didn't understand. These are completely different tangible products. These are full-fledged SSDs like a Samsung 960 Pro or this Intel 750 right here, but they're based on 3D Crosspoint or Optane technology. Now with the introduction of the 900P, it was not widely adopted, being the fact that its price is really high. And this is still an issue. It's up to three times the cost of a uh, competing 960 Pro drive. But that being said, let's take a look at some of the advantages it offers. Starting with the fact of its form factor. It gets an add-in card. It also is U2 device. And I'm hoping eventually it'll be M2 as well, which means it'll fit, fit in a small slot like your 960 Pro, 960 Evos, and even the recently announced 970s. Those would be an ideal option. But what's really cool is there's an optional U2 adapter. So you plug it into an M2 slot, hooks out to a U2 uh, drive, U2 based drive, which looks like a thicker 2.5 inch SSD, but it has the insane speeds offered by a full PCIe um, storage solution. Now that being said, 900 and 905, originally it went up to about 480 gigs with the 900P. The 905 now goes up to 960 gigs. So it's a massive improvement in overall storage capacity, along with being a significant improvement in its overall performance. For instance, your 4K read speed, you'd be looking right around 575,000 IOPS versus 550,000. Your write speed, you'd be looking right around 550 IOPS, 550K IOPS versus 500K. And then your sequential, the one that everyone loves to tout, obviously the uh, Samsung drives have 3,500 plus. These run right around 2,600 and 2,500, the, nine, uh, the 905 versus 900 respectively but there's a big difference that makes these things a really killer application is its overall endurance. That's how many times you can write to a NAND cell before it dies or potentially dies or starts to fail and wears. Well, with your standard 960 Pro, let's say to have com good comparison on a 480 gig drive, and let's take a 512 from a Samsung 960 Pro, you're talking roughly for, um, let's say 960 Pro has a limit of about 480, gigabytes or terabytes, I believe, writes, which means let's say you're writing a massive, like 13 terabytes a day doing uh, productivity work in a workstation or render station. 
That's a realistic workload. You can write that all the time. Well, when you put that in that production environment, that drive can die in months. However, you take an Optane SSD, you put it in the exact same scenario, that'll last five years. Because in comparison, the, um, the endurance of an Optane 480 based, which is the closest we can get, would be 8,760 terabytes versus that 480-ish from a Samsung 960. And that's per their like public data sheet. And for comparison, let's take the highest end one, like a 960, 905. That will do over, wow, this is a huge number. It is 17.52 petabytes written before you possibly will lose NAND cells. So that means comparatively, let's take a one terabyte, which is slightly larger of a 960 Pro, that has 1.2 per petabyte or 1200 terabytes written. So you have 17, 17,520 terabytes written for an Optane drive or 1,200 terabytes for a 960 Pro. So when you're using it in a huge, producti uh, huge productivity environment where you're writing massive renders, you're rendering things in 4K, 8K, files that are dumping in and out of the drive consistently, you're talking a massive difference as far as the overall lifespan of this product and how quickly you're gonna be changing things out or having them fail. Now, we did mention the price. That's gonna be a big one because one of the issues is that Right now it's about, for instance, the 960 drive that is a 905P, that is about what a buck 35 per gigabyte. It's about $1,299. Whereas you're talking, it's about one third of that for a similar size one terabyte 960 Pro. Now from a visual aspect, obviously M2 drives, they're like a PCB, great. But the, the 900P, Looked kind of cool, a lot better than the very uh, institutional looking 750. But the 905P had a really cool look and they added a cool LED aesthetic for people like gamers and enthusiasts who want something that looks really cool and doesn't just look like a black block just sitting in their PCIe slot. Now this is where we're gonna introduce Mr. Testbench. This is where I do a lot of my R&D work and testing and we validate platforms like this. So give us one sec, we're gonna start this thing up and show you what it looks like installed in the system. So now, as you can see in the test bench, the aesthetic with the blue LEDs, that just makes it a cool look, you know, especially for a gamer-esque feature, or even someone who just likes to have a little bit of ambient lighting in your case. Unlike the board that has LEDs everywhere, because I stripped down this Maximus X uh, formula to uh, give us easier access to all the ports and whatnot. Uh, this thing just has a static blue light. There is software that's gonna be coming later so you can actually adjust the intensity and even potentially the color of the light, but that'll come at a later time. What's cool is that this not only performs really awesome, it also has a really cool look. So it just allows you, if you wanna block it out, you can, but at the end of the day, it's not as boring for those who like something that light up like the original drive. It just adds a little bit of flair for that extra cost you're paying. Now to wrap it up, it's obvious. I have an opinion that's probably gonna be slightly unpopular, being the far, even majorly unpopular, because a lot of people look at Optane and they think, oh, that's crazy, it costs this much, you know. It doesn't make sense because you can get a Samsung drive for so much lower or even more so. Hey, my Samsung does, you know, 3,500 megabytes plus per second, uh, uh, 3,500 megabytes a second, way faster read speeds or write speeds or what have you. But my question would be, when do you really use that? That's where, that's where I feel about it. I used an Optane drive, like I legit used it in my main system for a while. And I can tell you the difference, even on like the Optane 800 drives, the little M2s they released recently, like the, and they're really odd size, like 118 gig and like 58 gig. And that's because of the 3D crosspoint packages they used. The size differences, like for instance on a NAND, for instance NAND like powered here or on your Samsung drives, they can be up to one terabyte per module. Right now 3D crosspoint is right around, I think it's right around 64 gigs approximately, something like that. And so there's a big, uh, line of delineation between what you can offer there. That being said, calling the Intel Optane the fastest SSD I've used comes with a bit of apprehension for me because of the cost. But in reality, when we're talking raw throughput performance and overall performance, like real world where you can feel it, your system will be more snappy. Yes, it comes at a cost. I don't think everyone's gonna use one of these, but I think overall, at least trying it it's similar to like using a G-Sync monitor. Once you use it, you will never look at like regular monitors the same. Same thing with using something like, this is such a big shift, like switching from a hard drive to an SSD was a big shift. This is a big shift as far as overall everyday system snappiness. Not something that can be shown as numbers while it can in certain IOPS conditions. Actually the usage, seeing how quickly things happen when you tell them to, 
it's like night and day. And that's something I guess you guys will have to try for yourself. But as far as recommendation, this thing is A plus with AVA Direct. This thing, Intel Optane has performed beautifully. And I cannot wait till the technology grows and expands and starts to become much more affordable because this 3D Crosspoint can easily unseat so many existing flash storage technologies and make it for a much better experience for everybody. And that about covers why I feel the new 900 and 905 or 900 series Optane drives are considered arguably one of the fastest drives you can get for your system. Thank you for joining us and please join us on the next one where we'll be talking about more cool tech gadgets, gear, and stuff we use to make AVA Direct custom systems. If you're looking forward to some great content coming out of our team here at AVA Direct, please join us on our social media channels such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you get notifications when we upload brand new videos to get you the newest in tech every day.